QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Bank feeds, credit card data setup. Let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop Bank Feed Practice File. We started up in a prior presentation, going through the setup process we do every time. In the view drop down, we got the hide icon bar, open windows list checked off. The open windows, they're open on the left. Reports drop down, company and financial. Let's look at that P to the L, the profit to the loss, the income to the statement, range to the change, 010122 to 123122. I'm going to stop doing that here. Customize the reports. We're going to fonts and numbers change the font we'll bring it up to 14 as has been our custom closing it out okay yes and okay and then reports again company and financial this time the balance sheet let's customize it first change the range 010122 to 123122 and then fonts numbers change 14 oh yes k then let's go to the banking drop down and go to the bank feeds and we've got our bank feed center so we'll go into the bank feed center so we've been entering data thus far with relation to uh, one account a checking account note that we might have multiple kind of checking accounts or uh, that we're going to be connecting to possibly even multiple financial institutions and we might have credit card accounts so that's what we'll focus in on this time we're going to add a credit card account the credit card account is typically through a bank a financial institution and therefore we have a similar capacity with the bank feeds now setting them up there's a couple ways you can do that one you can add another account here using this button you can go to the banking drop down even if you had not set up any bank feeds go to the banking set up a new bank feed account as we saw in the past I'm going to close that. I'm not going to go into it at this time. You can also then go to the lists drop down chart of accounts. And we noted that we set up the checking account last time and had the bank feeds connect to it. You could set up another account, making sure that the type of account is a credit card account this time. We're going to hit the rise up new account. And I'm going to say that this is going to be, it would be a credit card type of account. You got to make sure it's a credit card type of account because only the credit card account and the bank accounts have the capacity to be connected to the bank feeds. Now, once we, when we connect to the bank, we can make an automatic uh, kind of connection. Let's check that out. Let's do it. I'll do it this time. We'll go to the, go to the banking drop down, go to the bank feeds and then set up. I'll say yes, closes all the windows, which is what I was trying to avoid, but it's okay. Then you can go here and type in a credit card, American Express, American Express, for example, and it should have many of the popular credit cards and you go through the similar kind of setup process, noting that the financial institutions, as we saw with the banking side of things, might have different kind of uh, security measures or protocols, passwords, IDs that you're going to have to use to verify that it is indeed you. You might have to actually contact the credit card company on occasion but usually it's a pretty smooth process to set up. Like with the, the bank feeds for the bank accounts, uh, you might also download the data from the institution. Could You might do this for a couple different reasons. One, when you're setting up the credit card accounts, maybe you're going further back that you can pot, then you can get from the connection directly to the bank. So if you wanna go like a whole year or two years, sometimes there's limitations on how far back you can go. If you go and take the data first from the institution, then sometimes you can go a little bit further back and then you can connect the bank feeds going forward from that point. Or if you just don't want to connect to the bank and you'd rather just download the data and upload it, then you can use that method as well. So that's, and once you upload the data into the system, just like with the bank feeds, it'll be in bank feed limbo, 
meaning it'll be in the system but not used to connect or create the financial statements and then we'll we'll create the financial statements with them so i'm going to use the system where i downloaded the information from uh from the bank and usually if you go to your financial institution it would be something like this you'll find something like download account activity and then you're usually going to have a range that you're going to enter in you want to make sure that you download the quickbooks file that's the one you're going to need not the quicken but the quickbooks like it'll look something like this so if i close this out we're going to say minimize minimize so here it is now it looks like the software file but this is actually a cube it's and it's called a qbo which is a little confusing because it sounds like an online kind of thing if i right click and i go to the properties then you can see here that it is a, a data file quickbooks ofx data file so that's the thing that we're going to use to upload now there's a couple ways you can upload it into the system i'm if i went to the banking drop down bank feeds and i said uh import web connect then we could try to connect in this fashion or wait a second however uh the system often recommends that i actually close up the quickbooks file and then just double click on the data file and it'll open up the software and then open up the bank feeds now so i'll close this up i'm going to make sure that i had this file as the last file i had open and note that i didn't create it a, a uh, an account for the credit card down here which would be a liability account a credit card account type and i'll create that when i as i connect to the bank so i'm going to have to connect that i'm going to be aware of that so i'm going to say okay let's close this out and are you sure you want to exit i'm sure quickbooks thanks for checking up on me but that's what i want to do and then i'm just going to double click on this file which should open up quickbooks and then bring in the data from here which is the data that i downloaded from financial institution for our just our mock data here and so i'm going to say one two there's our password in order to get access and so the verification has been thrown down throw down the verification so then it says quickbooks has received new transaction data please indicate whether you want to import this data or save the file for uh, import later we're going to import it we're going to do it right here right now so it gives us the information on where we got the data from and then we've got the choice down here use an existing quickbooks account which we don't have one because we didn't set one up so it's grayed out here so we're gonna have to create an account and notice it doesn't give me an, an option for the account type because it can see that it's a credit card account so it's going to set it up as a credit card type of account which is required it can't be in other words other current liability type of account because the credit card account is the one that has the capacity to connect to the bank feeds. So we'll, we'll just call it credit card here. Note that you might want to put the credit card, like the name, if it was American Express or whatever, uh, or the last four digits of the credit card possibly. But uh, you wanna be careful with that kind of stuff as well, because internally you kinda, it would be nice to have the name or the last four digits of the card or something like that. But when you have external reports, then uh, you might not want to give that information externally so sometimes you might make a parent account so that it will open up and you can then collapse it into just credit card and then have your credit cards as sub accounts underneath it but i'm just going to make a credit card account so we'll say continue let's do this your web connect data has been successfully read into quickbooks you can view the downloaded data in bank feed center by selecting your financial institution so i'm going to say okay and then it usually opens right up to your bank feed center here so but i'm going to close it out and go back into it sometimes this bar always pops up for me if that happens to you you can go to the view drop down top icon bar and then i go back down to hide the icon bar and it, it moves it away go away thing and then i'm going to go to the banking drop down bank feed center and now we've got the two tabs atop We've got the checking, we've got the credit card info uh, as well. So if we go into the unrecognized area, then uh, these, are the, these are the ones that we can use to then enter the data for the credit card, which we will continue on doing in a future presentation. From this point, it's similar to the checking account. It's a little bit more confusing to think about the credit cards because when we have the the amounts that we're paying for instead of a decrease to the checking account it's increase in the liability 
and then we're gonna have those intercompany or interbank fee transactions we have to deal with because when we pay the credit card, it will most likely be coming out of the checking account. So now you're gonna have you know, a transaction that is impacting both sides being a bank feed kind of situation. So we'll talk about that kind of situation with these as well in future presentations.